Following on from our previous videos about styles and heading styles, we're now going to add a bit of panache to our documents. Um, we're going to talk about mass formatting and also how we can manipulate these documents to move large sections of text around the screen very quickly. So what we've got in front of us is a, another document that you can obtain from pcteach.me. Um, nothing special here, it's just a straightforward Word document which has just got a series of headings which are not boldened at the moment and some paragraphs of text. So what we're going to do is apply what we've learned from the previous videos and just go and slap some heading styles on. So I'm going to make all of these heading one. So go to specifics, do the same and scrolling down the documents you'll see that we have summary heading one and references heading one. Great, okay. Now what I want to do is each one of these heading ones should really be on a separate page because these are very key topics that I want to talk about. Subsequent headings that I may want to put underneath, which may be heading twos, they don't want to go on to separate pages. They can just carry on with the flow of the document. But heading ones I want on separate pages. Now, think about a large document. If you've got, say, a document with, say, 40, 60, 600 pages, how many headings are you going to have in your document? How much formatting are you going to need to do? I'll tell you right now, lots. What you need to do is move away from the old highlighting approach and changing your text. You need to actually fiddle around with styles. Now, getting to use styles is quite straightforward. However, there is one rule I would generally recommend you take up, is if you're going to modify any of the styles, make sure you click onto one of the styles before going into editing. The reason being is, let me show you, I want to edit heading one. As you can see on this version of Word, it's showing heading one highlighted here. But if I click into another section, can you see it's showing normal is selected. Now, if I then wanted to edit heading one as it is now, there is a danger that I will convert that normal text into the heading one style, which I don't want. So what I'm trying to get across here is try and click onto the headings that you want to edit first. You don't have to do that. If you're very careful, you can you can get around this problem. But I'm quite slapdash and I like clicking on things and seeing immediate effects. And as a result, I do tend to make a mess of things. So it's best to always click onto the headings that you want to change first. So with the introduction, just clicked on, you don't have to highlight it. Go up to the top, right click on the heading one style and choose modify. On earlier versions of Word, pre-2007, you would go to the format menu and choose styles. Select heading one and then you should see a modify button. So with modify selected, there we go, we're in this screen that we saw in a previous video. But what I want to do now is I actually want to put page breaks in. Now this can be easily done by going to the format menu and choosing paragraph. There are two tabs within here and one of the tabs is line and page breaks. In line and page breaks you'll see an option that says page break before so if you tick that box and choose OK and OK again just to come out of modifying the style you should see immediately I've now got four pages because what it's done is it's automatically put in the page breaks for me. So Imagine you had 25 heading ones in your document. Rather than putting a page break in 25 times, you've only had to do it once. So let's say I wanted to change the font. I'll just go into modifying the heading style again. And I want this not in Cambria, but I want it in Tahoma. But I also want it in size 22 point. So if I OK that now, again, if you had 20 um, headings, you would have to format it 20 times. In this, peace of mind, you do it once and it will affect all of them. This is the power of styles. Now, the next thing we want to do though, is I want to move things around. Now, you may want to say specifics is in the wrong place and it needs to go after summary. Not that you really would want to in this document, but we're gonna do that as an example. So, what can we do? Well, you're probably used to doing this approach, highlighting the text, copy, move your cursor to where you want to put it, put the I-beam in the document and choose paste. Problem with that is how many pages are you highlighting? If it's on this sort of small sample, great. But what if you've got 20 pages that you want to highlight? Well, good luck. How many times have you tried to highlight more than a page and before you blink, you're on page 70? Well, 
using this approach which I'm about to show you, you won't have to worry about that ever, ever again. So just click into the document so you've not got anything selected. And now, at the bottom right in 2007, you should see an icon that looks like a little list, and it should say Outline. In earlier versions, you can also get to this by going into the View menu and choosing Outline View. So if you click onto that, what you now get is you get the document, not in a print preview, but more like in a hierarchy, a parent-child sort of a, a view, where the heading one style is the parent to the paragraphs, which are the children. Now, what we can do quite quickly is we can collapse the documents. Now, this is not a Microsoft term, but it's the term I use when we come into doing large documents. I call this the skeleton view. The reason being is you see the skeleton of the document. You're not interested in the meat, i.e. the paragraphs of text, I'm just interested in my headings and how they all fit together. So on the toolbar at the top, there should be a section which says all levels. Now if you click onto that and just choose level 1, what you're telling Word to do is collapse all the text and only show the heading 1 styles. And look at that, there we go. So imagine you had 60 pages and you had 20 headings. By and large, choosing level 1, you could then just collapse it all, pretty much all onto one screen. Now, what I said I wanted to do is I wanted to move specifics and summary underneath. Now, just before I do that, I just need to explain about this symbol and, as you can see, the line that's appearing under the text. The symbol is a quick way of, if double-clicking, you can expand, and again double-clicking, you can collapse that particular section of the document. So you can see the text inside it. Now, the other thing is, as you can see, you've got these dotted lines. This dotted line indicates that there's actually text underneath that heading. Notice when I've expanded it that the dotted line is no longer visible under specifics, whereas if I double click again, it comes back. So with that basically discussed, what I want to do is to say I want to move specifics underneath summary. Well, it couldn't be easier in this view. All I do is just with the mouse, go over to the plus, hold the mouse button down, and drag downwards. Your pointer should become an up and down arrow and when you let go of your mouse you can reinsert it to a different location. Now think of it this way, how many pages could there be on summary? In my case there's only two paragraphs and one page but summary could consist of 60 pages. So if you wanted to move specifics underneath summary, there would be a lot of scrolling in the old approach. With this approach, it's a drag and drop, and it takes you no more than two seconds to do. And as a result, if I just go back into the main document again by going to Print Layout or View Print Layout, you'll see that the summary is just above the specifics now. So you very quickly reformatted your document in regards to position of text. But it doesn't end there. I'm going to go back into the Outlook outline view. And then let's say that specifics is actually not a top heading title, but it is a subheading of summary. Well, using that mouse on that corner again, hold the mouse button down. And instead of dragging up and down, drag left to right. And you'll see your arrow now changes to a left and right arrow. Now notice how it sort of jumps inwards, one level two levels, three levels, four levels. That's telling it what heading style to use. So obviously if I go back up to the first level here, that's going to tell it to use heading two. And as you can see, the font has now changed. Let's just go back into the main document to see that. And if I click on the heading specifics, can you see now it's showing heading two? Now, what I could do is I could go even further. If I go back into the outline view, and let's say references is also inside this um, particular section, but it's underneath summary to start with. If I just drag to the right, there we go, I've got that. But let's say references is part of specifics. So I'll go on to that plus again and drag to the right again. And as a result, I have now reformatted my document very quickly. So going back into the page layout view, you'll see that References is now, if I um, click on it, it's not showing it here, but it's actually Heading 3. And if I go further up, notice there's no page break now because it's all part of the summary heading. So Specifics and References now are other headings within there, which is Heading 3. Um, that's Heading 2, and obviously References is Heading 3. Please take my word for it. Um, it is there, it's just that we need to actually show all the styles. So with this video, what have I shown you? I've shown you basically how to control large documents by using the outline view.
The outline view works by using heading styles and by changing the level up here we can then control how many headings that we see and how quickly we can move a document. Using outline styles will save you a lot of time and will allow you to manipulate large documents with ease. Thanks.